So hello out there, welcome to another edition of a City Sports Exclusive. Of course the season is over in England and almost everywhere, but today we fly in a man that has been doing fan zone for us. We see him on TV in every corner of the world and today he gets to join us for another City Sports sports exclusive he's got Leroy Rosinia and I'm sure he's a very familiar face he's joining me for a city sports exclusive we'll look at how well some of the African players of course the interest will be on Ghanaian players but we'll look how on how well um, the entire Africa has done in the English Premier League this season hi Leroy hi. Nice, nice to, to meet you that again is, so we're doing a mini fan zone here so a lot of time you see him on TV <laughs> doing fans and also today we'll do a mini one and then of course we'll start with Ghanaian interest Leroy what have you made of the season so far I mean Chelsea we're obviously the most important team in England this season. Nobody saw that one coming. You predicted a Manchester City. Yeah, I think I predicted Man City because you know, Pep went there. So Man City had a, a very good squad to start off with. Yeah. I thought that they would add to the squad. The Chelsea have done magnificently. I think the key has been changed to the 3-4-3 yeah. system, getting the best out of yeah. Hazard, yeah. Uh, bringing uh, David, David Luiz into the side, you know, playing in the back four. He looked at an absolute liability was in the, in the, in the Premier League before. Yeah, yeah. But playing in the, the centre of three, he looks a world-class player. So, and Kante. Kante yeah. from Leicester, I think, was a key side. Yeah. I think it's been a, a major difference, which allows you to play with just two midfield players in the, in the centre of the park. We're, you know, we know what the, the modern thing has been to play with somebody who just sits there, yeah. with two midfield players in there. But with him and his energy and his ability, I think it's given them uh, the likes of Hazard the freedom to go. Well, well, my friends from Nigeria will be watching this will say, how come you did not mention Victor Moses? He's been an integral part of that particular system. Well, I was going to get into the wing back because yeah. Yeah, with, with Alonso, when I first saw Alonso uh, playing, I didn't think he was going to be a Premier League player. And with Victor Moses, I think the, the same applies. I thought yeah. his, his opportunity had gone. You know, Victor had been on loan, he'd been at West Bromwich, he'd been yeah. at Wigan, he'd been at, uh, been at West Ham yeah. um, more recently. And you thought, well, maybe his, his chance has gone because we've all this, all, always seen Victor yeah. as a right winger, yeah. a very, uh, in the Wilfred Zaha yeah. uh, mould. But then to see him play uh, in the wing back role to the to the, to the levels that he did this season was incredible. But I always knew that Victor had ability. I always said that I always thought he was a, a very special player, but I just felt he needed to find, not the position, but I thought the club. I didn't think that club would be Chelsea, because Chelsea don't give the younger players a yeah, chance. Yeah. But Conte's coming, seeing something in him that no one else saw, yeah. a wing back role. Because he is athletic, but we always thought he was athletic going forward. Yeah. He's had athleticism going yeah. forward, yeah. backwards as well. He's yeah. earned a new contract which he thoroughly deserves. He's yeah. now seen as a major part of that Chelsea squad, yeah. that starting yeah. level. Yeah. I think he deserves a Well, if part. Victor Moses was one that really came to the party this particular season, Yaya Toure, a lot of people said he wasn't going to play under Pep. As we understand, he's going to get a new contract. Mm -hmm. How impressed were you with his season? Look, I've always been impressed with Yaya Toure. I think the turning point was when his, uh, his agent had a little bit of a falling out yeah. with Pep. Yeah. I think when Yaya saw the team play, I thought he was desperate, desperate yeah. to get back in that yeah. side because he felt he could contribute. Yeah. And as soon as he got back in, I remember the game against Crystal Palace, he scored a couple of goals. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Yaya has always had amazing ability. Yeah. Now, one Pip Pep likes yeah. is amazing ability. Yeah. doesn't matter whether you're 33, yeah. 35, 36. If you can play and you can pass ball, which Yaya can, you can be an integral part of any team in the Premier League. Yeah. So as soon as I saw him get back in the side, I thought, I think Pep Pep loves it. Let's I think Pep will give him a new contract. Okay, let's talk about one of my favourite Ghanaian players, Jordan Ayew. Now, Ayew was with Aston Villa last season. Mm -hmm. They went down to relegation. This season, he went to Swansea City. He played a very key role in their survival. What sort of a player is he to you? I think Jordan is a confidence player. And um, when he went to a club like Villa, where the whole team yeah. was lacking confidence, I think he really suffered. Yeah. Uh, went to Swansea, he's still suffering, yeah. basically, from the effects of, yeah. uh, of his experience at yeah. Aston Villa and took a little bit of time to get in, into the side. Yeah. As soon as, obviously, the change of managers as well didn't help. Yeah. Wheedling went, uh, yeah. uh, Bob Bradley came yeah. in. But as soon as uh, uh, Paul, Clement. Clement. Paul Clement came yeah. into the side, I think he saw something yeah. in Jordan. And slowly but surely, he became uh, more of a part of the team. Yeah. And you saw his influence. He's, you know, he was on, on the pitch, he was doing nice things, but there was no end product. Yeah. Towards the end of the season, you started getting more assists, mm -hmm. getting into areas yeah. where he was getting goal-scoring opportunities. And we started to see what Jordan was really about towards the end of the season. Now, hopefully... He can take that on well, too. Andrea, you is his elder brother. He signed for £20.5 million mm -hmm. from Swansea City to West Ham United. Got injured on his first day, but he's got back to do six goals the entire season. 
not as heavy as the first season in England, but still a very good contribution. Uh, very good, because he had a serious injury yeah. uh, as well. Put, and put into context that he went to West Ham when they moved to the new stadium yes. as well. There's all, all, loads of new players who weren't up to standard, by the way, as well. So within that, he was injured. He's gone to a club that was in a little bit of turmoil yeah. because the fans hated the, the new stadium. Yeah. But slowly but surely, when he got back into the team, slowly got fitter, got sharper, found the position. Because, by the way, the West Ham team was changing yeah. week on week. Even Slavin Billis didn't know what team he was going to put out. You know, Antonio was playing right, was playing left. Yeah. So it took a little bit of time for him to settle. But Andre is a quality player. Yeah. And so if you play him in the right position, which I feel is behind the centre forward. Uh, yeah. But he did have a centre That's forward. Sense, Andy yeah. Cowell was always injured. Yeah. We didn't know who he was playing with. Yeah. You put it behind the centre forward on a regular basis and he builds up a rapport. With that centre forward, he was four goals. Now, how impressed have you been with Geoffrey Schlob? Now, he was at Leicester City when they won the title last season. He went to Crystal Palace and played very good mm -hmm. for Big Sam's team, a left back. Geoffrey has always been the most powerful, the most athletic player that, that I've seen. You know, oh. I remember that Geoffrey came to my attention when uh, he was at Leicester. He'd gone on, he'd gone on the trial to, to Man United. Yeah, so yeah. I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd get to know him with, mm -hmm. on, the champ, on the championship. And he's one of those players where you feel, is he a left back or is he a left wing? Or is he somewhere in between? Yeah. In fact, the wing back wall would be the best position for yeah. him. But what he is, he's powerful. And what he needs to do is develop a role for himself. Yeah. Where people say, look, you are definitely a left back, you're definitely a left sided player. I think he's better going forward than he is defending. Um, I think he's, I think he's, Christopher Palace is a great club for him. Yeah. I really, I think he fits the bill, athletic, strong. And I think next season, if he can develop a, a, a unique role for himself, not be the player who you think, oh, we'll find on the base because he can play in different positions, yeah. but a player who can go into that starting level and make a one position his own, then I feel that he, he, he can move forward. Well, Riyad Mahrez was the best player last season. What happened to him? If you can get into his head and tell me what really took him well, off the court. Claudio Vanieri happened to him. Claudio <laughs> decided that he was going to change things. Yeah, you know? he, yeah. he didn't think uh, all last season. And yeah. all of a sudden, he brought new players in. And he changed the whole world. What did he make of his sack and the whole world was shocked? I wasn't surprised. I wasn't surprised because although it was sad, after everything he did, I mean, Leicester achieved something that they will never, ever, ever mm. achieve again. But the game is about what happens on the football pitch. Yeah. And what was happening on the football pitch just wasn't right. Yeah. And it was down to Claudio Reyes. When you praise a manager for winning the Premier League, it's, yeah, the manager takes all the credit. Yeah. When things aren't happening, it's down to the manager. Now, I'm sure... There's a few players who might have undermined him, didn't agree with what he yeah. was he was doing. Maybe he wasn't listening to him. Maybe they weren't telling him what he was doing wrong. But Riyad suffered from that. Last season, everything was geared towards getting the best out of Riyad Mahrez. Mm -hmm. Because if you've got the best out of Riyad Mahrez, you've got the, the, the team play. Yeah. Kante, Kante was a bigness as well yeah. this season. Kante won the ball and got it to Riyad yeah. early. That didn't happen this season. So he's a quality player. And what? I did say that he's got... He's got ability, which he could, I, um, I have no doubt. If he well, it applied himself, could he go and play for last time? Yes, he could. But last season, he was part of a team that just didn't function. Well, last season, he was part of a team that did not function. I'm going to mention two African players, very important players that you've got to touch on before you go. Eric Bailly of Manchester United mm -hmm. and then Sadio Mane of Liverpool. They've been very, very impressive, top shape players and the continent is so proud of them. What have you made of their first season now? I mean, Sadio Mane obviously was with Southampton and his first season with Liverpool last season. Mm -hmm. For Eric Bailly, he came from Spain and he settled in well at Manchester United. Let's talk about Eric Bailly first because, you know, I thought when I first saw him, great athlete, proper defender, loves defending. The injuries have made this, this first season a little bit yeah. stuttered. But when he's got in the side, I think he'll be the number one centre-half. Um, I think he needs to toughen up. Uh, I think he get, picks up too many little injuries. I see him coming up with little things yeah. uh, at the times. Yeah. But there's no doubt when he becomes accustomed, which he needs a season to do yeah. in the Premier League, and at Red Club like Man United, he's yeah. going to be an outstanding player. Sadio Mane is already an yeah. outstanding player. Yeah, okay. When Liverpool paid 34 million for him, I wasn't, wasn't quite sure. sure. But now I'm absolutely sure that he isn't. He's the difference. And he's the one, with Liverpool finishing the Champions League, if they're to go on and win something. We talk about, they're good players. They've got Lallana, you know, they've got Coutinho is a, is a wonderful yeah. player. But Mane brings something different. He gives all that technical, technical ability and real game pace, yeah. real pace, direct pace and purposeful guys. and he scores goals. He's the one who makes the difference. Well, he's got to be the one who will make the difference uh, next season. But 
I'm going to push you. Which team do you think is more equipped to win the league title? So many magnificent managers. Jurgen Klopp, Jose Mourinho, Pep Guardiola, and all the top guys in there. Who do you think will get it this year? Look, as you said, top managers, top teams, they've all got, they've all got the finances to really, to really go and, and, and have a go for the Premier League. Yeah. But you cannot back against Man City. Yeah. Because with, with Pep, they've got some, some wonderful players. They will be going out and spending. And they've started the buying Bernardo Silva already. They've got all the best forward players, yeah. uh, I think. The, the, that group of four players is as good as it gets. Yeah. We all know that they need to be playing better. Maybe they need a goalkeeper. So you cannot back against yeah. Man City. But don't look. I wouldn't be surprised if one of the other five teams in that top six wins the Premier League. That's what makes it so special. Well, we'll see about that. Now, talk a little bit about your book, and then we can run up, uh, wrap up. It says banter a little bit for anybody who is watching why they need to get it. says banter. Okay, the book, the book is called It's Only Banter. And the reason it's called that is because when I was playing, uh, when I was managing, when I was coaching, when uh, somebody was uh, made a, a racial comment towards me and, and it was, I challenged it, and they'd come out with saying, oh, What's the matter with you? You know, it's, it's only banter. It's your problem. Well, it wasn't my problem, it was their problem. And that's why it's called It's Only Banter. It's about my father, myself, and Liam, uh, uh, my son. Um, but it's about the family as well, my sisters, my, my other children, who, and my grandchildren as well. And the, the problems that they will maybe they have come up, come up against already and will come up against in the future. And hopefully give some solutions to how to deal with that in a positive way. And to project uh, people of colour to a position of equality, which is where they should be, which is where they aren't in the world at the moment. So that's what the book's about. Uh, there's lots of nice stories in there. Funny, it'll make you laugh, it'll make you cry, and it'll make you think. Uh, hopefully, and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy the book. Well, I'm grateful to have you again, Leroy. Thanks and I'm much. sure we'll do this some other time Definitely again. Right. Thank okay. you. So that's been another City Sports Special. My name is Roman Osman. <laughs>